What are you doing, bro? I'm pointing the lipstick on. No, no. Is it recording? Yeah, it's been recording. Oh, shit. Can we pause it? Yeah, pause it. Release All right. your skin. Oh. Pre-workout snack going down. <laughs> Can't go wrong with banana honey. <laughs> like, so that okay. I'm not on some weird shit though. <laughs> <laughs> not on some weird shit for real though. All this is, is carbs and sugars. Like, you want fast acting carbs before you lift, so that you have like continuous energy throughout your lift and your pump lasts longer. Like, oh shit! I find that. <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing about this is funny. <clears throat> I can't believe you saved this site for recording. Really? Okay, now it's time. Bro, I don't know why I need all these, but I need them. Yeah. 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 Well, they be watching the YouTube, bro. They, they know what's up. All right. Because oh. I'm the only one that has that protein powder out of the two of us, so they know they gotta fucking share the love. Yes. Talk to them. Talk to them? Yeah. Alright. Oh, so, the pre workout is now going down for me. Can you wait for me to. There we go. Okay, do that again. <laughs> bro. <laughs> this is a good ad right now, so. Why are you, you filming are... it like that? Bro, it's like Rambo. Alright. Huge supplements. Again, powering this arm day. He's gonna take a scoop. Too. I'm not gonna take a scoop. On a serious note, if you want. If you want any pump products that don't have caffeine in them and you don't want to be stimulated but you still want a good pump, then this is what Owen's going to be taking today. It's Huge Supplements Pump Serum. If you want to be a normal person that wants to be stimulated when they hit the gym, Is wrecked. that normal? <laughs> I'm down at bro's level. That's crazy. I'm playing, I'm playing. Where's my sugar? Alright, I'm going to take like two and a half scoops because... I want to mog the shit out of Owen, and I am gonna mog the shit out of Owen. Take a look at this beautiful, magnificent, huge supplements pump serum. Mm. What? Yeah, yeah I the peach one. rings is the best one. Uh, out of all the rec flavors I've tried, peach ring is definitely up there. It's definitely the best one because it's the uh, it's the least chalky. Like all the like. To be honest, I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret of supplements. Hold on. A good rule of thumb when gauging what pre to get: if the pre tastes good, it's not good pre. Like. The, the ingredients in pre inherently makes it bad. So properly dosed pre mm -hmm. will actually taste worse than a, than a, like a fruity, good flavored, like pre. As long as it's tolerable, you know, you get it down and you have a phenomenal lift after, so. He gets that shit down. <laughs> All right, there's All right. some important information, so come here. Boom. All right, this is not a penis. <laughs> See this? <laughs> All right, so this is your arm, right? The arm is comprised of three things that you want to hit. So you got right here, which is the forearm, right here, which is the bicep, and the tricep, okay? So, all right, so what you want to know about arm training is that your forearms are going to get indirectly hit with anything you do, right? With any pushing movement, with any pulling movement, with any bicep tricep movement, your forearms are gonna get hit. So unless you have terrible forearm genetics, you shouldn't hit forearms. You really gotta focus on here. For the biceps and the triceps. So the triceps is made out of two heads, right? The long and the short head. And then the bicep right here is made out of the long and the short head as well. And you wanna hit all four of these for adequate muscle growth hypothetically speaking even if you have shit genetics absolutely terrible genetics but you hit all four of these things that i just said you're gonna get big arms how do you hit the long head of your bicep hammer curls how do you hit the short head of your bicep you supinate yeah okay i don't even know what supination is and i've been lifting for five years god damn it so supination is when your wrist your palm. So the first thing that you got to know is that your tricep makes up two thirds of your arm, right? You can't expect to have big arms if you neglect triceps. And how do you hit triceps? Well, you target both the long and the short head. So any type of skull crusher, any type of 
overhead movement where you're pulling your arms up like this will hit the long head of your tricep. Any sort of push down, if done properly, will hit the sh short head of your tricep, which will give you a nice horseshoe. Now, after you demolish your triceps, which, are the which is the majority of your arm, now you can go on to bicep training. Here's where a lot of people mess up. Okay, a lot of people might have the might have the peak. They might have the they might have the peak, but they won't have the thickness, right? Or some people will have the thickness, but not the peak. So you want to make sure that you hit both the long head and the short head of the tricep. Yo, pull out the highlighter. You'd be after next. Fuck you, right? <laughs> this side of the bicep that you're seeing right now from this guy's image is the short head. So. What can we do with the short head of the bicep? Anything with your palms facing up, as well as your, as well as the range of motion going outward, will hit the short head of the bicep. Do you want that like on your bicep? Okay, come here. Now for the sh for the long head of the bicep, you want to do anything with the, with a neutral grip. Okay, so hammer curls are very optimal for. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways. Sorry, sorry. I'm not gonna look at it. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, and subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> so, for our first movement. I always like to start off with something that kind of hits a little bit of everything and what I've noticed for me is that incline easy bar skull crushers I'm able to load the most weight and go to the failure the most effective in the beginning It's a little hard on the elbows. That's why you saw us warm up with a lighter weight at first, but now we're gonna start our first working set Can't hang. You gotta be able to drop your ego sometimes and know, <laughs> know when to be safer and when to drop real, the weight. Real shit. Easy bar school coaches, bro. I haven't talked to the camera when I when I like lift in so long that I'm just like out of it. But basically, I have to lower the weight now because I did three working sets with a plate, and I'm at the point where I'm so fatigued now that I have to drop the weight, or else I'm not gonna hit the eight to twelve rep range. So when you hit your working sets, you don't have to stay at the same weight on your, all your working sets. Like if you feel like your stamina is getting lower, then lower the weight and try to at least get into the eight to twelve rep range. So, in the sky, gazing far <coughs> into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use. Cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. 
Mm, all right, so we just finished with uh, incline easy bar curls. Uh, we're gonna move on to more short head work now. So as you can see right here, we have a, god damn, that's heavy. Uh, can I do this? Oh, I can do this. So we're gonna do a uh, single hand push downs. When you push at a 45 degree angle and your triceps and your elbows, sorry, and your elbows are locked, you get the you get the most activation in your short head so what we did with uh incline easy bar was that we targeted this portion of the tricep the long head but after the long head you got to focus on the on the short head to get the horseshoe so i'm trying to talk over this music right now it's not very smart let me just pause it real quick uh this movement right here we're really trying to just keep our elbows fixed push out at a 45 degree angle really targeting the short head of the tricep so let's get into this we're probably gonna not even do a feeder set because our elbows are already warm so Three working sets, and then we're on to biceps. Let's go. Bro thinks he's deaf tone. I have so much brain fog right now. But anyways, we're hitting alternating bicep curls. These are basically the best bicep exercise there is. Uh, there's no need to like go all technical and try to isolate. When, when you have a movement where you can just load up the most amount of weight and push yourself to failure and it feels good, right? That's the most important thing. If an exercise feels good, go with it, right? You don't have to do anything like stringently. Uh, I'd say do the movements that you have the most fun with, do the movements you can load the most weight in, and yeah, we're on our third working sets of curls. I already feel like my biceps are about to explode, so. If you actually use the correct load, like I see so many people in the gym and they don't use proper load. Like they're one, either not pushing themselves hard enough during their working sets, or two, not even using enough resistance. Like when your muscles grow, they require new stimuli, right? You can't just, you can't just like put on muscle if you don't up the weight because 
at a certain point, the stimuli that you're receiving from a certain weight is gonna be too little for you to actually put on excess tissue. So when you actually wanna grow, progressive overload, start upping the weight slowly week by week. It also helps when you're in a slight surplus. So 200, 300 calories above your maintenance and yeah, all your working sets should feel like butter. You should be getting better pumps than ever. And yeah, it doesn't matter how much volume you do. It just matters about the intensity that you do them in. So. Here, why is it? Yeah. No, no, no. Come on. It's what? Funny to walk? Yes, bro. Like, I don't even want to pose anymore because my butt will be hurting. <laughs> bro. Alright, so as you guys, I can make another one. That's not the original. You're gonna wait for the titty day. That's gonna be the good diagram. <laughs> okay. Alright. You're gonna get demonetized. Again. Okay. Alright. Okay. So we're just gonna clap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a lift. It was it was pretty decent, what do you think? Was it a good one or dude. In the beginning it was decent and then we just like because I, I made my video to like make an entire raw arm day, right? Because people want to see how many working sets you're doing and like how the intensity looks like. It's like when you're trying to film every goddamn set, it's like it takes away from the lifting. Like when I usually film YouTube videos, I film like one or two working sets, right? But it's every single working set that I filmed. And I'm, I'm not even going to put all the sets in the video. It's just going to be like the end because you guys are going to see like 
the ending of our sets all look the same. Like we're, we're literally all just, we're just training to failure over and over and over again. Like if we're doing three working sets, all of those reps will look exactly the same. It's literally us just like, like our muscles are literally giving out. So this video is not going to be that long because I'm only going to put like the end of our working sets, but that's besides the point. Uh, we still got to get better at recording, obviously. Like I've only yeah. made like... 15 videos he's only made like two yeah. so still a long way to go like lots of room yeah. to grow exactly and that's exciting because both of us hope to make this our like lifelong pursuit so knowing that there's so much room for maybe me. not lifelong lifelong is crazy okay life having the superficial things like the physique and those like flashy edits with the with the trending music and stuff can only take you so far in the industry before you're drowned out by dozens of other people who have the same thing going and so you need those intangibles those things that can separate you from the crowd and that's what Adam was talking about as being like, really, what he attributed as like the main cause to his success. And so I was just wondering if you could talk more on that. Like, So basically, it's all a formula, right? This whole world was built on algorithms. Like, you're not going to escape an algorithm. So what I've learned is that engagement on social media only works when you derive a personality from a face, right? People see these notor people see these notorious like fitness influencers, and if they're not making YouTube videos, if they're not putting if they're not putting their personality out there, it's like you're seeing a shell of a person. But when you make YouTube videos and when you actually put your personality out there a little bit, like people will start to see you for who you are, and they'll attach meaning towards your name, and that's when you get out of that saturated industry. There's so many people in this industry who have way better physiques than me. You can see these like Olympia level physiques. Like you can, you, there's literally IFBB pros that post reels every day, but why don't they get traction? They don't get traction because they don't have a personality. Like all they post is their physiques and their check-ins, which is fine because that's what they do as a profession. But if you want to gain notoriety, if you want to be influential, you have to put some sort of voice out there. It's like people are drawn more towards your aura rather than the physique, right? It's just like, my edits are fun to make, but at the end of the day, they're really shallow. They're like, how can I get these dopamine fiends to just click a like button for me? And how can I get these views to like two, 300, 400K views? But at the end of the day, those those views are meaningless. The views on my YouTube, I view, I don't know, I hold them, I hold them, yeah, in a much higher regard because I put my personality out there. Like I became vulnerable and I shared that part of myself with you guys. and. I feel like that's just a huge part of actually like differentiating yourself from the next person over because like how the fuck are how the fuck are you going to make a change? How will you be unique when there's other people with much better physiques than you? Like be honest with yourself. Like even if you have even if you're watching this and you know you have like a top 0.0001% physique, what actually differentiates you? And that's the question you need to ask yourself if you actually want engagement, if you actually want to be influential in social media. So, Because as I've grown more entrenched in this fitness industry and I've started to interact with other people um, you know, within the community, you really start to quickly see how shallow of an industry it is, mm. how numbers aren't reflective of virtue or people who are very like uh, upright or good people. Like You can have a strong following, but what does that translate to in real life? You know, It's not necessarily... Uh, correlating to like a good person or someone who's gonna make a good change and make a big impact in the industry and so as you start to see how superficial a lot of these people are you you have to re recognize like how can I separate myself what's gonna like uh, uh, differentiate me from the pack how can I make a positive impact how can I help these people how can I you know better my own life and it really comes down to like the personality and really being able to connect with others and inspire and that's what I think the two of us really have in spades and that's what we're working on in our connection I think is really powerful not just because we're two like teenagers or I'm not even a teenager a teenager anymore but fuck it you turned 20 uh, today happy yeah. birthday man thank you yes, sir. but um not because we're just two guys with good physiques that's not the most important part we're two guys who think on entirely different wavelengths than, than everyone around us I look at these videos and I have to edit them and I have to listen to myself talk. And sometimes it's very hard to listen to myself talk because I'm like, what might others, others think of me? But that's so fucking ironic because I literally put my naked body on the internet for people to look at and then for me to gain notoriety. But it's deeper than that. It's it's way deeper than that. It's, it's the mental struggles and the shit that I've had to overcome to get to the character that I am today. And it's just a very hard roadblock for a lot of people 
to differentiate them, themselves because they don't want to put themselves out there. They don't want to be vulnerable because it's like when you put yourself out there and when you stare at that camera and when you stare at your computer and you're editing your own voice, your own face talking, it's a very, very like, it's a feeling that, that it's almost like you have to have a false sense of confidence. You have to have a false sense of, yeah, this personality is good and I'm going to put it out there because if you don't, you're just going to look at the, you're just going to look at your production of the video and you're not even going to, you're not even going to like it. You're going to be like, you're going to be like nitpicking every single little clip to portray yourself in a, in a light where it's like so fabricated. But the truth of it is you just have to be genuine. Like I've genuinely like, I've had so much envy in my life. Like just looking at these numbers that these influencers have on like Instagram on any social media platform. And now that I actually have the number there, there's no meaning attached to that number. There's no influence. There's no legacy left behind. It's literally it just, is. it's literally just the same, like 1 million dopamine fiends on reels who follow every single good physique. And they just look at that, right? It's more than that though. I'm trying to create a community here. And that's why I'm, I'm so passionate about YouTube and editing because I want to be vulnerable. I want to put myself out there. I want to come across as genuine and Man, I've I've lessons to teach. Like this social media shit, it means nothing. Like the numbers I'm getting on Instagram, the numbers I'm getting on TikTok, even YouTube, none of this is worth anything. But it's it's just like how can I make a deeper purpose beyond just my my superficial appearance? And that's that's the key. That's the key. You have to be able to differentiate yourself. Like this isn't about clout. This is about the legacy yeah. that I'm hoping to engrave because Obviously there had to have been shit to that that's gone on in my life that has made me want to achieve this physique. It's like almost like a shield. It's a barrier and it teaches you lessons when you go through the way through when you go along this journey. So like this arm day is nothing special. I've done this arm day. What probably like 50 to a hundred times, but what makes this special is the outro. What makes this special is our ability to explicate our emotions and really feel real. We're humans. We are, we have difficulties processing our emotions still. Like I just recently just exploded out of nowhere on all social medias and I'm still trying to cope with that in my brain. So it's just a learning experience as we go along the way. And yeah, mm-hmm. gotta talk to my camera now, but thank you guys so much for watching this video as, as always. Uh, I've been lacking on YouTube. I felt like a piece of shit cause I haven't uploaded in a week, but this video is gonna get edited tonight and it's hopefully gonna be out Monday. So if you guys are seeing this on Monday, Thank you guys so much for the support constantly. And yeah, I hope you guys gained a little insight about me as well as gained a little information of how to actually grow your arms. So <laughs> yeah, that was what the video was about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, this ramble that we had about pursuits and a deeper fulfillment with fitness as well as like how we can cement ourselves in the industry. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this classic.